Hi, welcome to Daddy Curb's farm. I have a free day today. It's a holiday, so I'm home, and I thought I needed to get a little something done. It's hot, so I didn't want to do anything that was going to put me outside for too long, so I thought, I'll build up my compost pile. And I thought, why not just bring you along with me? So join Luke and I as we build this compost pile. Can you take these buckets? Just put them on the ground. We're going to start with material that is in the chicken run, the goat run. This is stuff that came out of the, the chicken coops and the goat pen. Uh, it's a combination of manures and bedding, hay, uh, just all kinds of scrap material that's just kind of built up. I let them scratch through it, eat out of it, and add to the pile as they manure in it. And it just sits here and gets all churned up and nice and small, and that helps the compost pile uh, work faster because the particles are smaller. So Luke, we're going to fill up these buckets and take them over to the pile. Hold that one. Yep, fill them all up. Now this wire cage here is going to contain our compost pile, but right now we just need to get things poured out. What remains here is the last bit of finished compost that was in this pile from the previous uh, pile that we composted. And there's some coffee grounds, some coffee, some rabbit bedding, rabbit manure. So we're just going to add all of this on top of that, then we'll mix it up. Okay, yeah, dump it out. Now this is very dry and very rich. This has a lot of nitrogen in it with all the, the urine and the uh, manures from the chickens and the goats. Because of that, we're gonna have to add in a lot of extra carbon. And I have a few sources of carbon. I'll take you and show you where I'm getting it. Behind the shed is this crate. A couple of years ago, maybe two years ago, I thought it would be a really good idea to put this crate here. I found it out behind my workplace and I was just going to fill it up with material and over time I would harvest uh, compost out of the bottom of it. That never really worked out. It's too far out of sight, out of mind and to be honest with you, it just I never felt like it was creating much compost. What I think it mostly is a place for rats to make their nest. So I'm going to start taking the material out of the top of this, put them in the buckets, and we'll add them to our other pile. All right, Luke, we're going to grab these pieces, these chunks of dried hay, and we're just going to cram them down in these buckets. going to take this dried out moldy hay and put it on top of our pile. Dump it out, Luke. And here comes the fun part. We're just going to start raking and using the pitchforks and the shovels, whatever we can, to get this pile all stirred up. Okay, now we're bringing that wire cage back because we're going to fill it up and Luke's going to put the hose on it and moisten it as I assemble the pile using the pitchfork and shovel. Yeah. 
All right, Luke, you're going to use your thumb and spray this, all this material, get it nice and wet as I throw it in there. Get all of it wet. Wow. I wish you could be here. I wish you could be in the place where you could experience turning this pile, creating this pile. Your muscles tighten up, you breathe a little hard, your heart races. That's because you're working out. If you're joined to one of those big gyms where you're paying 30, 40, 50 or more a month, cancel it. Build a compost pile. Build some muscle at the same time you're building soil. Your garden will appreciate it and your body will too. Anyway, little sidetrack. Okay, so this pile is intentionally this size. It's not a mistake. I didn't just throw wire together and heap it up and hope it worked out. This is sized because I know that a pile that is approximately a yard or a meter wide and about 30 inches to a meter or so tall is going to be the right size for a compost pile to have the mass that it needs to cook. If it's too small, it won't cook. It won't heat up. And that's what you need. You need that bacteria to start working and as they work the pile heats up now if the pile's way too big like i have a pile that i did with a tractor in the back it's cooking but it's also creating uh, because of the mass uh, pockets of anaerobic decomposition which is not all bad but really in a compost pile you want it to be aerobic and the aerobic bacteria needs to be a certain size and this is about the right size so get a nice wire cage something that you can pull off pretty easily fill it up and when you're ready you just pull it off set it aside and start throwing the pile into the basket again i just have one of these going and about every 30 days or so i start a new pile and by that time this is finished and i've applied it somewhere on the property in the garden or somewhere that needs some compost So thank you for joining me here on the Daddy Curbs Garden, this compost edition. I hope you learned a little something or just enjoyed the last six minutes. So soon, someday, if I get around to it, I hope I do, I'll show you turning this pile and I'll show you harvesting this pile or one like it. So once again, thanks for joining me here in the Daddy Curbs Garden. I'll talk to you soon.